United States Coast Guardsman Adrian Loya is out for blood. Lisa Trubnikova's blood. He wanted Lisa to die, and it was based on the alleged sexual assault. Loya writes about his obsessive thoughts and feelings about Lisa. It's a blueprint for murder. He calls it Loya War. Loya Wars is a 250-page manifesto describing Loya's relationship with Lisa and why he wanted to kill her. In the last chapter entitled Operation Purple Rebel, Loya writes a 13-point plan of how he'll get his revenge. Detailing the mission is a basic assassination mission. Confront Lisa any way I can and terminate her. Make sure Lisa knows that is I taking her life and why. This should be very interesting how it actually plays out. I am excited. The plan that he had written out in his manifesto really started taking shape in that October. As the autumn leaves are falling, Loya, armed with Lisa and Anna's home address, drives 10 hours from his home in Chesapeake, Virginia, to theirs in Bourne, Massachusetts. He's doing a dry run. So October, he does recognizance. He even set up these cameras outside, hunting cameras, some refer to them as, to verify that the two women live there. They do. In one video, Lisa is seen taking their dog out for a walk. And in two others, Lisa and Anna are seen leaving the house together. But for Loya, there's still more to do, including casing the woman's neighborhood, recording it all on video. He needed to see where he was going to be fighting, his vantage points. While driving, Loya has a panic attack. He turns the camera around to record it in real time. All right, I'm just, uh, oh, uh, Boulevard's on the side of the road. I'm, uh, I'm having, I'm, uh, having a, a, a panic attack. I started hyperbarylating. <laughs> I feel paralyzed, I, 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 I can't move. Then he pulls over to say more. It was, it was bad. My, my whole body was tingling, a weird tingling sensation. I realized I, <laughs> I was getting to an accident. So I was able to totally control the car anymore. So I slowed down, pull off the side of the road, turn on the hazards. Um, and then that's when I started the video because I knew this was, <laughs> This was big, and uh, people need to know about it. Uh, I guess also for my record, so I see what happens. <sighs> I don't know. This helped out a lot. Walk out. It's really pretty out here. Looking gorgeous this time of year. I'm gonna start heading to the car. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is for uh, this is for myself. This is for the investigators. No more secrets like this. Thank you for uh, for listening. Loya goes home after that, but just four months later, he's back in Bourne, ready to carry out his savage mission. Loya Wars will come to fruition, the day he's chosen his 31st birthday. But first, under cover of darkness, Loya sets up a camera again. He needs confirmation Lisa and Anna are home. Then hours later, he took the camera down, went out to his car, played it on his laptop, verified they were in the home. Lisa and Anna are there, oblivious to what's happening right outside their door, oblivious to the horror that's about to come. It's now 2 a.m. Loya is prepared for battle. He was dressed in black tactical gear with a mask over his face. First, he employs several diversionary tactics, starting with a fire. Loya set his car on fire to block the entry to the condominium complex. So now the car is on fire. He sets up the boom box or a stereo system outside of the vehicle. The music playing the theme from Star Wars. Remember, this was good against evil. Loya is just getting started. Next to that, he made what it appeared to be an explosive device and with a cell phone connected. He sets up another device a bit up the road. As the neighborhood sleeps, a nightmare is unfolding. He is now advancing on the condominium. As Loya walks down the snowy street, he's armed with four guns, a knife, and two pair of handcuffs. And he's wearing a body cam. Loya wants everything that's about to happen recorded. He places a 22 caliber rifle in the snowbanks near the house. 
Then he walks up to Lisa and Anna's front door. Two shots are fired. The door is breached. He made his way in. There's no lights on. He went up the stairs. And bursts into Lisa and Anna's bedroom. Moments later, multiple shots are fired. Then there's silence. A warning. What you're about to hear is incredibly graphic. There's a shooter. My wife and I are both shot. Do you know who shot you? Yes. His last name is Loya. He shot both of us, me and my wife. What? His last name is Loya. Is he related to you? No, he's from the Coast Guard. He's in the Coast Guard? Yes. Ma'am. Uh, okay, we got a report of a gunshot victim. Two of them and a female on the phone is uh, passing out. Unknown on the mail, last name is Lawyer. Are you anything on the gun? Negative. Just the name. And, and Lawyer, the one who shot you, where's he at? Why are you taking so long? We're on our way there, ma'am. We're right down the street. There's a car fire there. We, we got to move the car out of the way to get to you. Please hurry up. We, we're right. We're right down the street, man. We're we're on the road not. right now. Seriously. Thirteen long minutes into the call. The male, the male that shot you, is he's not in the house, is he? I don't know. All right, tell me about him. What does he look like? Stop making me talk. Where's he from? <laughs> yeah, we're we're coming as fast as we can get there. Then the terrifying sounds of gunfire. I hear shots. I hear gunshots. Next, the killer won't be stopped. Have cops walked into a trap? Just fired on the shot. I hear shots. I hear gunshots. I hear shots. That's Officer McDonald on the radio, telling his fellow officers he's been hit. I knew I had been shot almost instantaneously. 